Yeah, if you were to look at uh, any, pretty much any article or, or bulletin from an insurer, if I were to pull five to 10 of them now, uh, you know, a lot of the direct quotes from there would say that, you know, MFA is the single most effective uh, method to preventing a lot of these, uh, these attacks. And um, there's others we could throw in there as well and other, other things, mitigating factors and training and awareness, but they say MFA is most effective. Um, I, I like to make bad comparisons, but uh, you, you take a car and, and the club. So you've got a car, you know, anyone can break into a car and, and we see a lot of them being stolen. I mean, I look at it as putting the club on your car, you know, especially uh, here in Ottawa, you hear of all these thefts of uh, Forerunners, uh, Highlanders, um, some of those uh, Lexus and Toyota SUVs, and sorry to anyone who, drive, who drives those, but uh, uh, you know, the, the police recommendations on some of those was to park a more inexpensive car behind or to put that car in the garage. Um, you can put a, you know a club in it as well and you can have hidden cutoff switches so i think that's just a secondary layer um, that you know insurers have picked up on if that was in place it would have prevented a lot of these losses uh, that have happened so that's where we see them uh, them implementing it and again not my place to say but they consider it to be very uh easy to implement i know there's there's work involved but they they think it's you know it's it's a very cost effective and uh, the ease of implementing it is is fairly low so that's that's the number one on a lot of lists we see um there's other kind of factors that play into it as well saying that you know they're going to cut your deductible retention in half if you have mfa enabled um but yeah that's definitely it's f3 it's it's the top one item that they're saying that you know you need to have this in place and before it might have been selective as to which industries they went after for that now um, we're seeing it everywhere and yeah our our, our clients and as you've experienced as well um it's already been a discussion, uh, but it's more so ones that might not have internal uh, IT, might have not really had much of a you know remote presence previously, and, and now it's now it's coming up uh, now that they, uh, they have to have that in place. And I think we kind of briefly mentioned that you know we have some insurers who are asking uh, eight questions on multi-factor authentication. So it's not as simple as a yes, no, we have it. It's yes, okay, well let's go on and explain what that applies to and, and where it is. And uh, some of those questions, uh, you know, with inter intervention, are very difficult to answer. Yes, where some things don't apply. Because when we're talking about mandates and ultimatums, uh, some of the insurers say we don't care as long as it's a yes here, and there's no ex no exception. So some of it takes a little bit of uh, a little stick handling. But I think it all comes back to them saying that you no, know, we're looking at these losses and loss of. Um, uh, passwords and, and other data and, and, and the ease of getting in without that they're, they're looking and saying that had this been in place there's a very high likelihood that this would have been preventable